هذا مرتل هذا كل كلام جميل هون ايوه مصر تمام وين الاردن؟ وين محمود بيك؟ تعال وقف جنبي هون محمود اوكي ريدي؟ Thank you very much for being with us. As you see, we have uh, this press conference uh, called for by uh, the delegation of the State of Palestine along with our brothers and sisters from uh, the Arab group uh, in collaboration with our brothers uh, from Jordan. And as you see in front of you, we have representatives of the Arab group, uh, representative of uh, the uh, Islamic Cooperation Group, and also we're supposed to have the representative of uh, the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People. We are having this press conference to uh, express our outrage and condemnation of the attack by the Israeli forces and the settlers uh, against Al-Haram Al-Sharif, uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, and, and uh, it is the right of uh, the Palestinian Muslim worshippers to exercise their religious uh, duties and prayers in this holy month of Ramadan and in any other time in this uh, holy uh, Aqsa Mosque. And they, the Israeli occupying authorities has no right whatsoever ever to tell people when to pray and when not to pray, whether they want to be inside Al-Aqsa Mosque 24 hours or five hours or 10 hours. This is the exclusive right of the Palestinian Muslims and their friends, Muslims, to practice uh, their religious traditions in this place alone. And according to what we all know, that the 144 dunum of this holy site is an exclusive place only for Muslims to uh, practice their prayers in it. So this uh, statement of all of us is a, a statement of condemnation and salutation to our heroic people of Jerusalem who are defending Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa Mosque with their bare hands, and we uh, are inspired by their resiliency and their heroism, and we stand with them, and we stand with them here outside the Security Council. Uh, our uh, brothers in Jordan and us, we requested uh, the Security Council to shoulder its responsibilities. We are grateful for our brothers from the League of Arabs, from uh, uh, the representative of the uh, Arabs in the, uh, in the Security uh, Council, the United Arab Emirates, uh, jointly with uh, China, they requested an informal consultation tomorrow in the Security Council so that the Security Council to shoulder its responsibilities. What happened last night and this morning is illegal by the Israeli occupying authorities. It is violation of international law and international humanitarian law. And it is violation of the historic status quo, which is an understanding uh, that no one has the authority to regulate the security situation inside Al-Aqsa Mosque except Al-Waqf al-Islami run by the uh, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Uh, of course, you know, with, with us, we have uh, uh, Algeria as the representative of the Arab Summit, Egypt, the representative of the Ministerial Summit, uh, Morocco, the representative of Al-Quds Al Committee, uh, Lebanon as also the, the chair of the Arab group for uh, this month, and the League of Arab States, and also our brothers from Tunisia. Uh, we requested a meeting with the President of the Security Council. We are waiting for the time <coughs> to be given to us. 
uh, to deal with that meeting. Uh, we sent, as the delegation of the State of Palestine, uh, a, a letter to the Security Council, to the Secretary General, and to the President of the General Assembly expressing our condemnation of this uh, heinous act by the Israeli occupying authorities and defending the historic status quo and defending the right of the Palestinian people to uh, exercise their uh, prayers in Al-Aqsa Mosque and also this coming Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday of our Christian uh, population of uh, the Palestinian Arabs to exercise their rights without intervention or uh, attacks by the Israeli occupying authorities. Okay. أحكي بالعربي ولا بدك تسأل؟ طيب. أولا أريد أن أعبر عن امتناننا وشكرنا. نحن في وفد دولة فلسطين مع الأشقاء في الأردن الذين دعونا إلى هذا المؤتمر الصحفي الحاشد المكون من رئاسات عربية مختلفة سواء القمة الجزائر أو الوزاري مصر أو لبنان رئاسة المجموعة العربية هنا لهذا الشهر وكذلك قمة الاجتماع الوزاري لمنظمة التعاون الإسلامي الأشقاء في موريتانيا وكذلك الأشقاء في المغرب الذين يترأسوا لجنة القدس وكذلك الأشقاء في الإمارات الممثل العربي في مجلس الأمن وممثل الجامعة العربية وتونس الشقيقة معنا وهذا الحشد الكبير من هذه الدول التي تعبر عن منظمة التعاون الإسلامي والمجموعة العربية ولجنة فلسطين في الأمم المتحدة هي تعبير عن الإدانة القوية من هذه المكونات للمجتمع الدولي للأعمال الهمجية التي ارتكبتها سلطة الاحتلال الإسرائيلي وقطعان المستوطنين ضد أهلنا في القدس وفي الحرم القدسي الشريف وهم يمارسوا شعائرهم الدينية التي هي حق مطلق لهم وحق مطلق لهم أن يمكثوا في المسجد الأقصى أي ساعات يريدوا ساعة ساعتين 24 ساعة هذا حق مطلق للذين يريدوا أن يمارسوا شعائرهم الدينية في هذا الشهر الفضيل شهر رمضان وهذا العدوان الآثم من قبل سلطات الاحتلال والمستوطنين والمتطرفين الذين يريدوا أن يفرضوا تقسيما زمانيا ومكانيا على المسجد الأقصى الأمر الذي لن يتم بفضل جهود وصمود أهلنا في القدس الذين نحييهم ونشد على أيديهم ونقول لهم على أنه واجبنا أن نسندهم وندعمهم وأن نطلب من المجتمع الدولي وفي المقدمة من قبل مجلس الأمن أن يتحملوا مسؤولياتهم في هذا الشأن ولقد طلبت مشكورة الشقيقة الإمارات المتحدة بناء على طلب فلسطيني أردني أن يتم عقد جلسة مغلقة غدا في مجلس الأمن للتعاطي مع هذا الوضع وإدانة ما تم وضمانة عدم تكراره واحترام القانون الدولي والقانون الدولي الإنساني والوضع القانوني والتاريخي في المسجد الأقصى ودور المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية في هذا الشأن نحن طلبنا لقاء مع رئيس مجلس الأمن الاتحاد الروسي لهذا الشهر وننتظر الوقت الذي يبلغون عنه وكذلك بعثنا باسم دولة فلسطين رسائل إلى مجلس الأمن والأمين العام ورئيس الجمعية العامة في هذا الشأن كي يتحمل الجميع مسؤولياته بالنسبة لنا جميعا المسجد الأقصى خط أحمر وهو حق مطلق بال144 دنم الذي تشكل المسجد الأقصى حق مطلق وخالص وصافي ووحيد للمسلمين الفلسطينيين في ممارسة شعائرهم الدينية فيه وليس لأي طرف آخر حق في مشاركتنا في هذا مع أن المسجد الأقصى دائما مفتوح للسواح ومفتوح للزوار ولكن ليس لممارسة العبادة هناك ممارسة العبادة حق مطلق للمسلمين فقط شكرا
نعم سعاد السفراء هل تتصورون ماذا كان سيحدث لو قامت السلطات في أي بلد عربي بمهاجمة صومعة أو أو كنيسة والناس يتعبدون هناك هل كان سيسكت إلى هذا الحين مجلس الأمن وأنتم الآن من تعاطيكم مع أعضاء مجلس الأمن ما هو إحساسكم بردود الفعل من أعضاء المجلس وهل سيؤهلكم هذا إلى عقد جلسة سريعة ربما في الغد والحصول على بيان قوي وشاجب وبلهجة حادة لسلطات الاحتلال هذه حتى ليست سلطات قانونية سلطات احتلال والهجوم تم على مصلين في شهر رمضان الفضيل الذي يبقى فيه المصلون إلى وقت متأخر ربما حتى إلى وقت السحور في المساجد يتعبدون ويحمدون الله فهل أحسستم بردود فعل قوية من أعضاء المجلس أم ستقوم دولة أو دولتين بوقف استصدار بيان يضع النقاط على الحروف ويؤكد على وجوب احترام حقوق الإنسان ومن بينها حريات العبادة والتجمع والصلاة إلى ماذا؟ ماذا؟ أخي طلال أنت أثرت نقاط كثيرة صحيحة ومحقة وأنا أطلب منك ومن كافة الصحفيين عندما تلتقوا بعد قليل مع ممثل الأمين العام في المؤتمر الصحفي اليومي في الظهيرة أن تثيروا هذه الأسئلة معهم نحن من جانبنا تحركنا فورا وسنتواصل في التحرك مع أعضاء مجلس الأمن ونأمل أن يتحمل مجلس الأمن مسؤولياته في هذا الشأن وربما أخي ممثل المجموعة العربية في مجلس الأمن إن شاء أن يدلي بدلوه حول الوضع داخل مجلس الأمن فأهلا وسهلا به تفضل أخي العزيز نحن طبعا مثل ما تكرم وتفضل معالي السفير رياض منصور قمنا بطلب لعقد جلسة مغلقة لمجلس الأمن ونتوقع من رأسا جدول هذا الجلسة بكرة أنا يعني ما في شك أن أعضاء مجلس الأمن قلقين من التصعيد ومن التطورات اللي صايرة في الأرض الفلسطينية المحتلة وسيتم مناقشة ردة فعل مجلس الأمن إن شاء الله في جلسة غدا شكرا yes. A question in English if I may You're surrounded by these distinguished ambassadors from, from, from Arab countries Some of them though have now and some for some long time um, diplomatic contacts with Israel. We have the Egyptian ambassador, the Jordan ambassador, the Moroccan ambassador, the deputy ambassador from the UAE. What would you like those countries to do as they have this direct line to Israel? What do you want them to be saying at this time and if any of those ambassadors want to speak? Well, before they speak, the fact that they are with us here with this full force is something that we do really appreciate and it speaks for itself. They are with us, they are with Palestine, they are with our people in Masjid al-Aqsa, and we appreciate that. If any one of them wants to say anything, they have the right to do so, but I speak on their behalf that we appreciate what they are doing and not necessarily what they might be saying. Yes. I think for a lot of Palestinians, they ask themselves what does it bring to have another Security Council meeting uh, without really concrete results on the ground. Uh, could you say something to that? And also, uh, do you have any comments on Mr. Winsland's uh, statement? Uh, and do you, are you satisfied with his efforts on the ground? Do you have anything to say about um, what, he's, what he said and what he's doing? Thank you. Do you want the answer in English? With regard to Winsland's statement, actually it fell way short of uh, the uh, expectations that we have. The issue there, Palestinians, worshippers, have the complete right without any clarifications to exercise their right in that holy place all the time, especially during the month of Ramadan. 
to try to add other elements is diminishing the horror of this aggression by the Israeli forces against our people. You cannot be cold-blooded when you deal with, a sensi with an issue that is super sensitive for those who are exercising their right to worship in this holy uh, month. Now, uh, with regard to the other question, which is? A lot of Palestinians uh, see uh, that there is another statement, another Security Council yes. meeting, but uh, no concrete results for on us, the ground. While we appreciate resolutions and statements because they have value, yet we have been for a while pushing the efforts for moving from adopting resolutions or re reiterating uh, content of resolution to the implementation of the content of these resolutions. And in the forefront of these resolutions that we want its implementation, one related to settlements, which is a very sweeping, powerful resolution, 2334, and the other one, because it contains not only elements related to settlements, but also other elements that are really important to put an end to this occupation and for the attainment of the Palestinian people of their inalienable rights, including their right to self-determination. But the other resolution that is extremely important for us, and it is related to reality today, reality in Jenin, reality in Nablus, reality in Jericho, rea reality in El Khalil, is we want the implementation of Resolution 904 that calls for providing international protection for our people. In that resolution that we call for its implementation, it calls for disarming the settlers, not building a new militia of 25,000 settlers who, are, who hate the Palestinians, who are racist, who are uh, uh, terrorists, to be in charge of security, they will be in charge of killing more Palestinians. So to disarm the settlers, not to empower them. The other element in that resolution is to have international temporary present through the occupied Palestinian territory. We want the implementations of these resolutions. And we will keep knocking on the door of the Security Council and the General Assembly because it has also responsibilities with regard to uh, 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 protection of our people in order to engage in the issue of protection in the Security Council by implementing resolutions including 904, in the General Assembly implementing recommendations by the Secretary General which were welcomed by the General Assembly in expanding existing me mechanisms of provi providing protection for the Palestinian people. We will keep repeating protection, 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 implementation, implementations of these resolutions until everyone in this room behind me in the Security Council and in the General Assembly to implement and to uh, uh, elevate themselves to the level of really implementing these resolutions so that we can have a practical difference from reiterating you know, in, in a theoretical way, the positions to the implementation of what we need. If anyone wants to say something, I think, yeah. Maggie. Th thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Abad Mansour. I just wanted to follow up on what uh, the question that was asked uh, to, to, and just to tell you that the Council of the League of Arab States have met today and it adopted a unanimous decision condemning in the strongest term what uh, th those, this penetration that happened to the Aqsa Mosque and the requesting that the Arab group in New York move immediately to request a meeting from the Security Council. And uh, the invitation to this press conference came from Palestine and Jordan, which has relations with Israel. And it has been a meeting of the Security Council have been requested by the UAE, which has relations with Israel. And all of us are united in this uh, understanding and in this movement, and we will continue pushing forward until we achieve the protection that the Palestinians uh, deserve and until we establish the, uh, the independent state of Palestine with Jerusalem as its capital. Thank you.
Ambassador Mansour, in terms, in the context of the Security Council, do you see one particular permanent member of the Council as being an enabler of this kind of violent Israeli action that took place? Unable, you said? Enable. Enable? Enable. Yeah. One member? Yes. Of course, we know the reality in the Security Council, and by that I don't mean only the reality as it relates to the situation in Ukraine, which we all know that is leading to uh, a complete paralysis on many issues. But also, while we have these good resolutions, and it is the obligation of Israel, the occupying authority, to implement these resolutions, they are shielded by a country that you refer to. And in order to get away with the consequences of not implementing these resolutions. Precisely that, and sometimes others, you know, in the Security Council that have also the power of uh, uh, the veto. Uh, but uh, this reality will not deter us from continuing to push the Security Council to shoulder its responsibilities. And of course, the uh, Security Council was able to have a unified position on the assassination of Shirin Abu Akli, which is a rare something that uh, took place in this time of the paralysis of the Security Council. This would inspire us to push forward for a more of unified position of the Security Council as it relates to us. Uh, but in reality, that does not mean we are giving up on the implementation part we have to keep pushing for the implementation. We have to be as creative as possible in order to get closer to, to in that direction. We listen very closely to the debate in the Security Council. I think that the policies and practices of this extreme Israeli government is making it even difficult for the closest allies of that uh, country to defend them the way they used to defend them before. For example, if you listened very closely during the last debate to the statements of that one country that we are talking about, they did not use the language of the past that why are you singling out Israel all the time? Why don't you deal with this issue or that issue? They did not use that language. And then they, were, uh, they articulated a position of rejection of uh, you know, uh, expanding settlements, approving illegal uh, uh, outposts. So this is, these nuances are important. I hope that one can build on them and uh, widen the gap between the entire members of the Security Council in one hand and this uh, extreme government that is not paying attention to anyone, including those who are shielding them and protecting them and financing them and equipping them with the most advanced military arsenals. Now, I am not naive to believe that these nuances are going to get us closer to paradise, but I am a skilled diplomat that I build on every small something while I'm marching toward the end go game, which is putting an end to occupation and the independence and freedom of the Palestinian people in their own independent state with Jerusalem as its capital. Ambassador, uh, the, the extreme government you talk about, uh, they issued a statement that said they are, they are, what they are doing is to maintain the status quo and calm tensions on the temp monk, Temple Mount, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What's, what would be your response? And just now you said there's, there, there's value for the uh, Security Council re resolutions, but you also mentioned the the, the Israeli government, they are not really implementing many of those resolutions. If they do not implement resolutions, what's the value of the resolution? It, it is, you know, it, it's, it's interesting that some of those who tell us if we don't go to the Security Council to have a resolution, that we are not uh, conducting our responsibilities uh, honorably. And they criticize us and they see, oh, there, there is a conspiracy. They did not push for uh, a Security Council resolution. They went for a statement or something like that. And then when we have a resolution like 2334, and then they tell us, you know, what is the value of this resolution? It doesn't worth you know, the ink 
on the piece of paper. So it's like damn if you do and damn if you don't. We are not deterred by these cynical remarks by some. We will stay the course to adopt resolutions when we can because they are valuable. And this is what our people expecting from us as a minimum. And we will keep pushing for the implementations of these resolutions because that is the extremely important thing to do. In addition to that, for those who think that uh, these resolutions, you know, what is the worth of these resolutions? I think we fought very hard in the fourth committee, in the fifth committee, and in the General Assembly to have a resolution putting the entire Palestine question before the International uh, Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice is getting ready for inviting everyone to have submissions before the 25th of July to contribute to the deliberation of the International Court of Justice. And then when this exercise is finished, finished and the ICJ submit and render its advisory opinion from the highest court in the international system, I think it has a tremendous value. And that would be another avenue for us that we are going through with the support of everyone be around us here and dozens more who are not around us here who will uh, uh, engage in the submission exercise to the ICJ. We believe these are also practical steps and the resolutions calling for them are important resolutions and they are much more valuable than the ink in which they were written on. Ambassador, the decision by the ICJ on the wall, nobody took notice of it. In the contrary, I don't think that nobody took notice of it. The, 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 they didn't dismantle it. They did not dismantle it for a variety of reasons, including the reasons that I refer to, that there is a huge force and power, and sometimes more than one, in which they are shielding and protecting Israel from accountability and the consequences of their violations of international law. That is part of the reality that we go through, but that does not mean that we are going to stop. In the case of Namibia and South Africa, for example, they were for facing a similar reality like us, but then they went to the ICJ and they had advisory opinions, and these opinions played significant role in the attainment of the people of South Africa and Namibia, in the case of Namibia, their independence, in the case of South Africa, of the dismantling of the abhorrent, inhumane system of apartheid. We are not reinventing the wheel. We are learning from all of you, from all those who succeeded uh, before us in accomplishing their national objectives. We will not be the exception to the rule one day we will reach the promised land. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I comment on, on the same question that has to do with uh, the neighboring countries, those who are entertain uh, diplomatic relations with Israel. Egypt, as you're fully aware, is the first to have had uh, peace with Israel. Egypt and Jordan are, are uh, pursuing very active diplomacy. We have hosted in the last few weeks two important meetings in Al-Aqaba and Sharm el-Sheikh, where uh, the U.S., Palestinian uh, uh, authorities, Israel, Egypt, and Jordan were there trying to reach understandings and so on. The issue is not uh, that w whether we are pursuing active diplomacy trying to, to help or not. The issue is the respect of those understandings and, and, and following to the letter the understandings that are made in these uh, configurations. Egypt in its capacity as well as the current uh, chair of the ministerial uh, a council of the League of Arab States has convened and called for an emergency session last night at the permanent representative level, and, and a statement was issued crystal clear, similar to uh, the one uh, uh, of condemnation that uh, uh, Minister Riyad Mansour has alluded to. Well, excuse me a second. Uh, the spokesperson of the SG came from the other room. He waved to me. He gave me a signal, I think, that he is starting the noon. Uh, 
I will. I will. One quick follow up. I will deal sorry, with you. Just, it was a question. My question was whether those countries. I mean, you're trying the Security Council route. Whether those countries who have this direct line to Israel are able to put more pressure on than the others. And are you going to try and do that? That was the question to the four Okay, countries. they all listen to you and they hear you, and I'm sure that they will do the right thing. Thank you so much, and we will keep you posted.